Hi there. Today we're going to be talking about the structure and classification of bacteria. So bacteria classification is important, uh, revealing the identity of an organism so that its behavior and likely response to treatment can be predicted. Bacterial structural components. Bacterial cell walls are rigid and protect the organism from differences in osmotic tension between the cell and the environment. Do you know that the cell walls of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria are a bit different? Gram-positive cell walls have a thick peptidoglycan layer and a cell membrane, whereas gram-negative cell walls have three layers, an inner membrane, an outer membrane, and a thinner peptidoglycan layer. The mycobacterial cell wall has a high proportion of lipid, including immunoreactive antigens. Bacterial cell shape can also be used in classification. Now we will discuss six components of bacterial cell of a bacterial cell that are important for its classification, pathogenicity, and therapy. Number one, capsule. Number two, the lipopolysaccharides. Number three, the fimbriae or pile. Number four, flagella. Number five, slime. And number six, spores. So let's get into their detail. So the capsule is a polysaccharide layer that protects the cell from phagocytosis and desiccation. Lipopolysaccharides are surface antigens that strongly stimulate inflammation and protect gram-negative bacteria from complement-mediated lysis. Fimbriae, or pili, these are the specialized thin projections that aid adhesion to host cells. Escherichia coli, that causes urinary tract infections, bind to mannose receptors on ureteric epithelial cells by their P. fimbriae. Fimbrial antigens are often immunogenic but vary between strains so that repeated infections may occur. Example, Neisseria gonorrhoeae. Flagella. These allow organisms to find sources of nutrition and penetrate host mucus. The number and position of flagella may help identification. Okay, next we have slime, a polysaccharide material secreted by some bacteria that protects the organism against an immune response and eradication by antibiotics when it is growing in a biofilm in a patient with bronchiectasis or on an inserted medical device. Spores. Uh, these are metabolically inert bacterial forms adapted for long-term survival in the environment, which are able to regrow under suitable conditions. Bacteria have a single chromosome and lack a nucleus, and that's of course because it is a prokaryote. The DNA is coiled and supercoiled by the DNA gyrase enzyme system. Bacterial ribosomes differ from eukaryotic ones, making them a target for antibacterial therapy. Bacteria also contain accessory DNA in the form of plasmids, integrons, transposons, and bacteriophages. These may transmit antimicrobial resistance and may also code for pathogenicity factors.